Again, we've talked about this in the lab, and we've done a lab write-up on, uh, on it. We have Ohm's law and power. So the Ohm's law says, what, it, what it's really saying is delta V is IR, but we're so accustomed to writing just V, 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 that we don't always write delta V. What it's saying is that uh, if you put a certain potential, if you put a, a certain potential difference between the two ends of a wire, like if you have a battery here, this end of the wire is going to be at a high, higher potential, this end is going to be at a lower potential, and the current is going to flow. Okay? So the potential difference is proportional to the current, and the constant of that proportionality is the resistance R. So this is known as Ohm's law, and it shows, it shows that there's a linear relationship If I plot, uh, if I plot, uh, volts versus resistor versus uh, current, okay, there's a linear relationship, and the slope of that line is the resistance R. Okay, so the the current here's the official definition of current. Current is defined as dq dt okay it's the rate of uh, it's the rate at which current is flowing through any cross sectional element of the circuit okay so if you take any little cross section it's the rate at which the current is flowing how much charge how much charge is flowing through that section any cross section per uh, unit time okay and the uh, current density, J, is defined as the current divided by the area A, this current density. The current density, J, is a measure of how much current is flowing per unit area. The current is defined as the rate at which current is flowing per unit time. Okay. And the current density, if we uh, look into um, the current density, is defined also as the, uh, let's see here, is, is, sorry, the current density is equal to sigma times E. So Let's see how that came about. In other words, this one is uh, something that is derivable that we can actually uh, prove. If you look here at uh, the definition of current density, which is current over A, current density is defined as I over A. The current going through the wire is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance, right? The resistance of the wire is rho L over A, right? Multiply by A. So we have V over rho L, okay? Voltage over the length of the wire is the electric field in the wire. Therefore, from the definition of current density, I over A, and the fact that the current from Ohm's law is voltage over resistance, resistance of a wire is rho L over A, which is what we were just doing, the A and the A cancel, and uh, voltage over the length is the electric field, so I, meant I end up with J, is equal to electric field over resistivity. And since one over resistivity is conductivity, okay, times E. So what is this saying? This is saying if you set up a certain electric field, if you set up a certain electric field in a wire, there's gonna be current flowing through that wire. Okay? The 
the more the, the less the the more the electric field that you set up the less the resistivity or you could say it this way the more the electric field you see that you set up and the more the conductivity the greater the current density will be again it it's a it makes perfect sense the greater the electric field that you set up in a wire the greater its conductivity therefore the greater the, con the current density okay now let's see if the units work out what are the units of sigma ohm to the minus one meter to the minus one units of electric field Newton per coulomb, or you can say volts per meter. Electric field is volts per meter or Newton per coulomb. So what does that give you? Okay, well, you have volts. Uh, you're going to have volts per, and this is ohm goes down, volts per ohm. Meter goes down and goes meter square. Okay? What's volts per ohm? Go over here, okay? Volts per ohm is equal to amps, okay? Amps is the uh, unit amount of charge uh, coulomb per second. Volts per ohm is amps, which is coulomb per second. So you go back, the cycle continues so then if you have volts per ohm, that's amps per meter square. Okay, so the equation works out and it makes sense also. Okay, and the power equation remember in the case of capacitors we had this equation the energy stored in a capacitor was equal to uh, half uh, Q squared over C. Then it had different versions, half CV squared and half, uh, the other one was uh, QV. For resistors, we instead of having an energy equation, we have a power equation because it tells you how much watts how much joules are flowing through this wire per second, okay? How much joules per second? So the VI is similar to this, QV, okay? It's the charge times voltage divided by half, the power in the resistor, the, following, the power flowing through the resistor is VI. Then you got V equals IR, right? So you put the volts is the IR, that would be uh, I squared R, okay? And then I could put I equals V over R, and then that would give me V squared over R. So according to this equation, let's see, this would be the analogous to this, right? This would be analogous to what? Uh, uh, I squared R, so I is analogous to charge, Resistance is analogous to capacitance, so this will be the equivalent of this, I squared R, except this one is Q squared over C, right? And then the V squared over R would be V is V, and then R again is uh, equivalent to 1 over C. So then this one would go with this one. So again, just like in capacitors, uh, the depending on the situation, you could, you could use either of these three, and depending on the situation, one of them is sometimes the better than the other one. For example, let me show you one example of that. 